an uneven day for Sam Howell and the offense. Injuries are starting to pile up a little bit. And Sam Cosme is letting the Ravens know what they can do with their 24-game preseason winning streak. All of that and more on the Daily Commanders update for 19 August. Let's go. <music> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Ref the District's Daily Commanders update here on the Believe Network. This is a special Saturday edition. I am the Stoner. Appreciate you all checking in. Let's get right to what happened in training camp today. Today was day 17, I believe. And the big thing about it today was today was the last day fans are going to be allowed in camp. This is when it starts getting real, yo. We've got three weeks until the opener. Do I, Am I doing the math right? Is it three weeks from tomorrow, Sunday, until the opener against Arizona at FedEx on a Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock? So now this is where it starts getting real. This is where you really start installing all of your uh, offense and your defense. Of course, we all uh, like offense more, so we're more interested in that. And without the fans there, you don't have to worry about video getting leaked out of all the install because those who are there, the beat reporters and such, they know not to uh, put out any video of the play. So last day at camp, it was a beautiful day in Ashburn, Virginia, and of course, uh, this is what it looked like there. This is from uh, uh, John Kime, John underscore Kime on Twitter. Huge, huge turnout of fans today there at uh, Ashburn at Commanders Park. So uh, I don't think they got quite a sellout, not quite 10,000, but a massive amount of fans. Um, great day there in Ashburn. At the end, they gave out ice cream to everybody. Not just the beat reporters like they've done uh, earlier in training camp. The commanders gave ice cream to every single fan that was there. How cool was that? I won't say who wouldn't do that, but you all know who wouldn't do that. So again, great day of camp today, but let's let's start talking about what happened on the field today. As I said in the opening, it's a bit of an uneven day for the offense. And Sam Howell, he threw... Quite a few interceptions. I think I read or saw at least three, possibly even four. Not a big deal, but they weren't sharp. A lot of reports about receivers dropping balls up to uh, double figures in dropped balls, and including mostly it seems like Cole Turner was dropping a lot of balls today, but it was a lot of people. So not a good day. Uh, really for Sam Howell, but that's not a big deal. He's not going to be perfect every day. Uh, but what you, what the sense you get again from the uh, from the beat reporters and those who were there watching is it's it's not a situation where you're like, oh man, this is not looking good for Sam Howell. That's not the sense we're getting out of camp. By all accounts, everything is going way way better than expected with the quarterback situation in the offense. And you can chalk that up to Eric Bieniemy. You can chalk that up to new uh, quarterbacks coach, uh, Tavita Pritchard. I think that's, is it Tavita Pritchard? Yeah, uh, the guy from Stanford who came in. Uh, Zampezi is in there helping out, uh, of course, with Bieniemy. And Or is it Sam Howell? Or is it these receivers? Or is it the stigma of that guy who's not here anymore? So it could be all of those things, but all the reports are way, way better than what anybody expected. And in fact, we're not even doing the Sam Howell report anymore. Check that out. No more Sam Howell report because it's no longer undertones of good days or bad days. It's just he's out there. He looks solid. He's QB1. He's the starter. Let's start rolling with this. So that was kind of the big thing out there in the offense. Defensively, though, uh, Emmanuel Forbes had a darn good day today, and here are a couple of highlights from him from the commanders that they put out. You can see here that uh, Benjamin St. Juice deflected the pass. I'll play that over again after. And Forbes, doing what Forbes does, he's around the ball. That's the reputation he had in college, obviously, at Mississippi State with six 
uh, six returns for touchdowns and that he's just always there. Look, he's just there when St. Juice locks, locks the dude up, locks up uh, Bates. Forbes is there for the interception and Jack Del Rio loves it. And then here, of course, he's covering Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin is a master at contested catches, but he could not come down with that one because of the defense that Emmanuel Forbes was playing. So Emmanuel Forbes is the real deal too. What's going on at Commander's Park? Everybody's the real deal. And it's getting me a little bit worried as I've talked about on previous DCUs. Sam Howell might be the real deal. Jahan Dotson is the real deal. Emmanuel Forbes looks like the real deal. And we already have other real deals in Terry McLaurin and uh, Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. We all know Cam Curl. Cam Curl will get paid, although Ron said we're not even talking about extensions and stuff like that right now because... Uh, you know, still the owners are still trying to get settled in and getting all that stuff figured out. Usually when they do announce extensions or they, they do have these extensions, it's about a week, maybe two uh, before training camp and or a week or two before the season starts. We'll see what happens there with guys like Cam Curl, Sweat, Young, and there's a lot of guys. Antonio Gibson's up for a contract. Uh, all the guys on the defensive line, the the James Smith-Williams, the Two Hills, F.A. Obata, all those guys are up uh, for contracts. I believe even Kendall Fuller is in the last year of his deal. So we'll see what happens with all that. Right now we're just concentrating on um, on the field and everything that's happening there. So let's get to the injury report. Now normally what we do on the show is we put out tweets of the different injury updates from different beat reporters. However, there were so many today that instead of doing all that, we just made a list of the injuries that were reported today. And I'll go through them very quickly so I don't bore you all too much. But Logan Thomas, of course, with his calf, he's working on the side field. That's an upgrade from last week. Last couple of days, he has been working on the side field. He's not doing any drills or anything like that, but at least he is out there on the field doing uh, some work on the side field. Uh, cornerback Danny Johnson with his shoulder. He also worked on the side field. Of course, he got body slammed by Mark Andrews in that joint practice and injured his shoulder. Um, don't worry too much about that either. He should be back soon. Chase Young with his stinger. Uh, he participated in individual drills but did and then went to the side field to work. They're not too worried about that either. They're just being very careful with a lot of these injuries. Uh, offensive lineman Andrew Wiley, who missed some of practice yesterday and a little bit of the end of the joint practice with the Ravens, with his calf, he participated in team drills but did not uh, participate in the practice itself. Uh, they were in um, – there was no pads today, so let me make that clear that there was no hitting or anything going on today. That's why some of these injured guys could get out there a little bit and work with uh, team drills. Same with Sadiq Charles uh, with his calf. You'll notice a lot of calves on here. We need a calf conditioning coach. Why are so many guys injuring their calves? Side note. Uh, but so same with uh, Sadiq Charles. Um, he was out there for team drills um, with the offense as well. Defensive tackle Jonathan Allen. This is a new one. He was diagnosed with a minor. Uh, minor issue with plantar fasciitis um, for a big fella. That's not great. So he did not practice, but Ron assured everybody it's a very minor thing. So don't worry about that either. Uh, offensive lineman Charles Leno. We don't know what's going on there, but um, he was around for the installs of plays, but he did not participate in any of the drills. Uh, we know Charles Leno will play through a lot of pain. He's a warrior. He hasn't missed a game in 10 years, so don't worry too much about that either. Uh, def defensive tackle Fedarian Mathis um, with his calf. He he did not practice today. He was not out there. Didn't really hear a whole lot about that, but he has not practiced uh, for a while since, um, since the game against uh, Cleveland, the preseason game. So keep an eye on that. Uh, Kendall Fuller, don't know what the injury is, but he was working on the side field for the second straight day. He did not practice yesterday either. And then the last one is uh, wide receiver Dax Mill left practice and did not return, which uh, which is curious. We might hear something. By the time this comes out, 
7.30 Saturday evening. Um, we may find out more what's going on there, but he did leave and never came back. Um, why is that a big deal? Well, Dax Millen is fighting for a roster spot. And if he can't go on Monday night against the Ravens and Casimir Allen gets like all his reps in the wide receiver position and punt return, that's that's just not good for his um, fight to stay on this roster. As, we, as most of us think, he's fighting for that seventh and final spot. We believe. It, tell us what you think about this uh, wide receiver, if you agree with this. Of course, Terry, Jahan, Curtis Samuel, Deami Brown, top four locked in, no doubt. We think Byron Pringle makes uh, number five. We think the undrafted free agent Mitchell Tinsley out of Penn State is probably the number six, and then that number seven and if they even go seven, they might even just stick with six. But if they do go seven, you've got undrafted free agent uh, Kashmir Allen out of UCLA. He's a tot. He is tiny, but, man, he is fast. So it's either going to be him or Dax Mill. We'll see what happens. Uh, Monday night, Dax Mill needs to be out there to uh, get those reps and and showcase his skills to uh, Eric Bieniemy, new offensive coordinator, the guy who kept you last year. He gone. Scott Turner's gone. So, Keep an eye on that position battle. All right, last thing uh, we're going to talk about here today is uh, this video from right guard, starting right guard, Sam Cosme. Sam Cosme had a little bit of something to say about the 24-game winning streak for the Ravens. Win streak even enter your brain, the preseason win streak? I think it's a stupid record. I mean, who gives a shit about preseason games? I agree. Yeah, I mean, if we beat it, great. Well, I'm we're going to beat it. So there we go. Funny line there at the end. I mean, it was all funny, but curious line there at the end. It says, uh, we're going to beat it. Now, what does that mean? I was trying to, I was trying to decipher that What We're going to beat them to defeat that record. Is that what he means? Or we're going to beat the record of 24 straight wins, meaning they're going to win more than 24 in a row. That that's not really plausible. So I think the first one, even though he didn't directly say we're going to beat them, he says we're going to beat it. I think he's saying they're going to win Monday night, but he's not going to have a, a whole lot of um, a lot of chances to help beat that record because he's with the first team offense and they're going to be out there for a quarter, maybe a quarter and a half. And then guys who have uh, no bearing on this team are going to be out there trying to beat. Baltimore and beat that record 24 in a row. Not a, it's not that big of a deal. What are we looking for Monday? We'll have a preview for you on Sunday. We'll have that out. It's the guys from the Believe in Ravens network, former uh, Ravens tight end Daniel Wilcox and his partner uh, uh, Kyrie Thompson. So we've got that coming out on Sunday, a preview with them. But um, all we're looking for really, a real quick summary, First and second team offense and defense have got to play extremely well. The the rest of it, you know, those are just guys fighting for spots. So if if Washington goes out there with their first and second team offense and they take a 13 to 6 lead, and then the third, fourth, and fifth stringers go out there and lose that and Baltimore keeps their streak alive, nobody cares. We just care about what the first and second team does. So there you have it. That is the Daily Commanders update here for 19 August, a special Saturday edition. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you hit that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscriber and hit those notifications so you know when we put out new content, which, of course, is all the time. And until next time, be a fan.